The process of excitation-contraction coupling consists of all those processes involved between the time of generation of the action potential on the muscle sarcolemma and the actual contraction. As the action potential reaches the neuromuscular junction, vesicles containing acetylcholine fuse with the membrane of the nerve terminal and acetylcholine is released into the cleft. Acetylcholine molecules rapidly diffuse across the cleft and bind to the acetylcholine receptors. Binding of acetylcholine to receptors immediately opens ion channels, allowing sodium ions to rush into the muscle fiber and potassium ions to diffuse out. Acetylcholine is then split to acetate and choline by cholinesterase, resulting in inactivation and closure of the channel. The initial flux of ions due to opening of the channels brings the membrane potential to threshold, causing the voltage-gated sodium channels in the vicinity to open. The resulting action potential is propagated over the entire surface of the muscle and also courses into the T-tubule system. As the action potential encounters DHP receptors in the T-tubules, it causes opening of the ryanidine calcium channels of the lateral sacs thus allowing calcium ions to diffuse out of the lateral sacs and into the region of the myofibrils. Calcium then binds to troponin, resulting in movement of the tropomyosin-troponin complex away from myosin binding sites on actin. The contraction process continues as long as action potentials continue to reach the neuromuscular junction, thereby keeping the concentration of calcium elevated around the myofibrils. To end the contraction, calcium must be actively transferred by the calcium pump, calcium ATPase, back into the lumen of the lateral sacs. This pump utilizes ATP as a source of energy. This process reduces the concentration of calcium in the vicinity of the myofibrils such that calcium dissociates from troponin. Tropomyosin again covers myosin binding sites on actin and the muscle relaxes.